Rather than removing a century-old tree, a woman in Coeur d'Alene turned it into something new. We tour her little library. Lots of rain and mountain snow fell across the area today, tracking a little bit drier weather tomorrow, but a chance of snow develops just before Christmas. Details are next. And is Spokane Valley voting to split Washington State into two? Not so fast. We're verifying a false claim circulating on social media. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Handraham. Welcome everyone. I'm Jane McCarthy. The number of people hospitalized for the flu in Spokane County is fewer than half of what it was by this time last year. Health officials are hoping the drop in cases means we'll have a relatively mild flu season. Krem 2's Alexa Block has more. Last year, Spokane County had a record setting flu season. More than 600 people were hospitalized last year. Normally in one season, there will be somewhere between 180 and 250 hospitalizations. You know, last year was a pretty scary year in terms of the severity. And epidemiologists believe that could be why more people are getting their flu shots. So far this year, the number of serious flu cases and deaths are way down from last year. 29 people have landed in the hospital from the flu and one person has died in Spokane County. Last year, at this time, 77 people had already been hospitalized and three people had died. While health officials like to see those numbers down, we still aren't at the peak of the flu season. That's usually between January and March. It's too early to tell if we will have a normal flu season or if a more severe one is headed our way. For now, health officials encourage people to get their flu shot. For us, this is a blessing. You know, it gives us a chance to extend that period of time where people can get protection. In Spokane County, Alexa Block, Crem 2 News. Well, there's a claim floating around online this week. An online news site in Seattle reported that the Spokane Valley City Council is voting on a proposal to split Washington into two states. Tonight, Spokane Valley is responding to that article saying they have no such plans. The city sent this statement saying in part, we don't know where this information came from, but it's certainly not grounded in any fact. This came as a complete surprise to us and to our city council. The Spokane Valley City Council posts all their meetings, by the way, agendas and records to their website. And nothing says we're splitting in two. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, take a look at this. This is a rare tornado that touched down in western Washington. This damage happened this afternoon. Now, this is in Port Orchard. It's about 25 miles southwest of Seattle. The National Weather Service says they won't know the strength of the tornado until tomorrow. But as you can see, it uprooted trees, it ripped apart some homes there. And as of right now, no injuries are reported. So if you're from Washington, you know tornadoes here are pretty rare. How rare? Well, according to NOAA, Washington averages about three tornadoes a year. We're in the middle of December. In the entire country, there's an average of 24 tornadoes each year during de December. None of them are in the Northwest. Most of the tornadoes in Washington usually happen in either May or June, and they aren't very strong or violent either, meaning they are not between an EF3 or an EF5 tornado. Again, we don't know this tornado's strength until something, sometime rather, tomorrow. Things much calmer here at home. We did see quite a lot of rain overnight and today. We did. Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tonight tracking more wet weather on the way. Tom? Yeah, it looks like the next round of uh, wet weather is going to arrive on Thursday in the form of snow and rain showers, but we're going to kind of dry things out across most of the area tonight and again tomorrow. So you take a look at the latest Doppler radar. Lots of rain and snow occurring over on the west side of the state, and especially in the Cascades. We have some lingering showers here in northeastern Washington and northern Idaho, but as you can see, for the most part, it is drying out. And my gosh, is it warm, but it's windy. 44 degrees, the average high temperature should be 31 for this time of year. You can see that wind blowing out of the southwest at 24 miles an hour. We're going to see wind gusts again tonight and tomorrow up around 30, even possibly 35 miles per hour and continued mild weather. We'll look for a daytime high of 43. Right now, I think it's not going to get down below freezing overnight. So again, even if we got some showers, it would be rain. Of course, everyone's thinking, can we get a white Christmas? Well, there's an outside chance, at least on Sunday. It looks like we get a little bit of light snow Sunday with a daytime high of 36. Monday looks dry and it looks like more like rain than snow. But on Christmas Day, 
There's a chance of a few snow showers. We'll talk more about that with your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. Today marks one year since that Amtrak train derailed in DuPont, Washington. It killed three people and left dozens injured. It sent 10 train cars off the overpass right onto I-5 below. An investigation found the train was going nearly 50 miles an hour over the speed limit. Dan Konzelman was on his way to his accounting job when the Amtrak train derailed right in front of him. Despite not having an, any medical training, Dan rushed in to help. And in those first few minutes before first responders got there, Dan helped more than a dozen passengers. There was pieces of trains and cars and glass and metal um, everywhere and broken people. Pretty soon you're like crawling crawling through train cars where the roofs are collapsed in and climbing through broken windows and you know looking for anybody that might be alive in the wreckage. Well he ended up pulling more than a dozen people out of the wreckage. He stayed with several of them holding their hands as they waited for paramedics. Konzelman was pursuing a career in accounting but because of that day he's decided to take a different route. He started as a volunteer firefighter and then went through paramedic training and he is now in a training academy with the Tacoma Fire Department. Wow, sounds like he was in the right place at the right Indeed, time. Indeed, and good luck to him, right? Well, it's a good beer for a good cause. A few weeks back, we told you about the Northern California Brewery that came up with a new beer in honor of those impacted by the deadly wildfires. It's called Resilience IPA. It is a bold brew meant to represent strength. The brewery wanted to take it a step further and they did. So they're teaming up with breweries across the country now to raise money. 100% of the proceeds go toward victims of the wildfires. Now so far 1000 different craft breweries are serving up the IPA and that includes locals Iron Goat Brewing and 12 String Brewing Company. Both of them tell us today they're going to start serving the beer this week. Beer brings people together. And so as a community, you know, one would only hope that uh, if anything were to happen anywhere, that we can all come together and really help create better, you know, better good. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. 12 String Brewing Company in Spokane Valley is hosting a release party for the beer. Now that's happening right now. It runs until 10 o'clock tonight. That brewery will keep the beer on tap until it sells out. Iron Goat Brewing in Spokane, they are hosting their release party on Saturday and that runs from 6 until 11 p.m. They say they'll also have live music and a special dish inspired by the beer. So we're hoping it sells out and raises a lot of money. Yeah, if you need a good cause to drink a beer, there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, so take a look at this. A Coeur d'Alene artist found a unique way to put an old tree to new use. Mm -hmm. She transformed the tree's stump into what's called a little free library. Her Facebook post about it has gone viral and has been shared now more than 30,000 times. You can see why our Taylor Vito gives us a closer look inside. That does make the world a cooler um, place. Indeed. And by the way, the artist has some good carpentry skills, right? Yeah. Even has power going to it. That Raise is the so bar. 